Bedford Level Experiment The Bedford Level Experiment is a series of observations carried out along a 6-mile 9.7 km length of the Old Bedford River on the Bedford Level of the Cambridge or Fens in the United Kingdom during the 19th and early 20th centuries to measure the curvature of the Earth. Samuel Burley Robotham, who conducted the first observations starting in 1838, claimed that he had proven the Earth to be flat. However, in 1870, after adjusting Robotham's method to avoid the effects of atmospheric refraction, Alfred Russell Wallace found a curvature consistent with a spherical Earth. The Bedford Level At the point chosen for all the experiments, the river is a slow-flowing drainage canal running in an uninterrupted straight line for a 6-mile 9.7 km stretch to the northeast of the village of Welney. This makes it an ideal location to directly measure the curvature of the Earth, as Robotham wrote in Cetetic Astronomy, if the Earth is a globe and is 25,000 English statute miles in circumference. The surface of all standing water must have a certain degree of convexity, every part must be an arc of a circle. From the summit of any such arc, there will exist a curvature or declination of 8 inches in the first statute mile. In the second mile, the fall will be 32 inches, in the third mile, 72 inches or 6 feet, as shown in the following diagram. After the first few miles, the curvature would be so great that no difficulty could exist in detecting either its actual existence or its proportion. In the county of Cambridge there is an artificial river or canal called the Old Bedford. It is upwards of 20 miles in length and passes in a straight line through that part of the fens called the Bedford Level. The water is nearly stationary, often completely so, and throughout its entire length has no interruption from locks or water gates of any kind, so that it is, in every respect, well adapted for ascertaining whether any or what amount of convexity really exists. Experiments The first experiment at this site was conducted by Robotham in the summer of 1838. He waded into the river and used a telescope, held 8 inches 20 cm above the water to watch a boat with a flag on its mass 3 feet 0 0.91 m above the water, row slowly away from him. He reported that the vessel remained constantly in his view for the full 6 miles 9.7 km to Welney Bridge, whereas had the water surface been curved with the accepted circumference of a spherical earth. He published this observation using the pseudonym Parallax in 1849 and subsequently expanded it into a book Earth Not a Globe published in 1865. Robotham repeated his experiments several times over the years, but his claims received little attention until, in 1870, a supporter by the name of John Hampton offered a wager that he could show, by repeating Robotham's experiment, that the Earth was flat. The naturalist and qualified surveyor Alfred Russell Wallace accepted the wager. Wallace, by virtue of his surveyor's training and knowledge of physics, avoided the errors of the preceding experiments and won the bet. The crucial steps were, er, Crucial steps were, or X were, to set a sight line 13 feet 4.0 m above the water, and thereby reduce the effects of atmospheric refraction. To add a pole in the middle that could be used to see the bump caused by the curvature of the earth between the two end points. Despite Hampton initially refusing to accept the demonstration, Wallace was awarded the bet by the referee, John Henry Walsh, editor of the Field Sports magazine. Hampton subsequently published a pamphlet alleging that Wallace had cheated and sued for his money. Several protracted court cases ensued, with the result that Hampton was imprisoned for threatening to kill Wallace and for libel. The same court ruled that the wager had been invalid because Hampton retracted the bet and required that Wallace return the money to Hampton. Wallace, who had been unaware of Robotham's earlier experiments, was criticized by his peers for his injudicious involvement in a bet to decide the most fundamental. In 1901, Henry Yule Oldham, a reader in geography at King's College, Cambridge, reproduced Wallace's results using three poles fixed at equal height above water level. When viewed through a theodolite, the middle pole was found to be almost 3 feet 0.91 m higher than the poles at each end. 
This version of the experiment was taught in schools until photographs of the Earth from space became available. Advocates of a flat Earth, however, were not deterred. On 11 May 1904, Lady Elizabeth Ann Blount, who would go on to be influential in the formation of the Flat Earth Society, hired a commercial photographer to use a telephoto lens camera to take a picture from Welney of a large white sheet she had placed, the bottom edge near the surface of the river, at Robotham's original. The photographer, Edgar Clifton from Dalmire's studio, mounted his camera to feet 0.61 m above the water at Welney, and was surprised to be able to obtain a picture of the target, which he believed should have been invisible to him, given the low mounting point of the camera. Lady Blount published the pictures far and wide. These controversies became a regular feature in the English Mechanic magazine in 1905, which published Blount's photo and reported two experiments in 1905 that showed the opposite results. One of these, by Clement Stratton on the Ashby Canal, showed a dip on a sight line only above the surface. Refraction Atmospheric refraction can produce the results noted by Robotham and Blount. Because the density of air in the Earth's atmosphere decreases with height above the Earth's surface, all light rays traveling nearly horizontally bend downward, so that the line of sight is a curve. This phenomenon is routinely accounted for in leveling and celestial navigation. If the measurement is close enough to the surface, this downward curve may match the mean curvature of the Earth's surface. In this case, the two effects of assumed curvature and refraction could cancel each other out, and the Earth will then appear flat in optical experiments. This would have been aided, on each occasion, by a temperature inversion in the atmosphere with temperature increasing with altitude above the canal, similar to the phenomenon of the superior image mirage. Temperature inversions like this are common. An increase in air temperature or lapse rate of 0.11 degrees Celsius per meter of altitude would create an illusion of a flat canal, and all optical measurements made near ground level would be consistent with a completely flat surface. If the lapse rate were higher than this temperature increasing with height, at a greater rate, all optical observations would be consistent with a concave surface, a bowl-shaped earth. Under average conditions, optical measurements are consistent with a spherical earth approximately 15% less curved than in reality. Repetition of the atmospheric conditions required for each of the many observations is not unlikely, and warm days over still water can produce favorable conditions. Similar experiments conducted elsewhere. On 25 July 1896, Willis's Grant Morrow, a newspaper editor, conducted a similar experiment on the old Illinois drainage canal, Summit, Illinois. Unlike Robotham, he was seeking to demonstrate that the surface of the earth was curved when he too found that his target marker 18 inches 46 cm above water level and 5 miles 8.0 km distant, was clearly visible, he concluded that the Earth's surface was concavely curved, in line with the expectations of his sponsors. The, core the findings were dismissed by critics as the result of atmospheric refraction.